Here we go. So today we're going to talk about classification, which is one of the main categories of machine learning. If you remember, we could try to understand any machine learning problem just by answering two questions. The first one was related to the type of data, numerical versus categorical. And the second one, which is more profound, had to do with what type of problem do I want to solve. So today we're going to talk about problems in which we have input and outputs, and we want to understand somehow the relationship between variables and our variables are going to be categorical. So in this kind of map of everything that you need to know in machine learning, we're going to discuss this, this square here. Okay, so let's get started. And let's use an example. So imagine that you're interested in heart disease because you have some, some people in your family who had suffered a heart attack and so on and so forth. And you go to the American CDC and you read something like this, that smoking, having high cholesterol or high blood pressure, is a marker of heart disease or of having more chances in the future of having heart disease. In, in the machine learning lingo, we're going to talk about these sort of parameters as features. So the problem in machine learning would be something like this. Are you at risk or not? So this is a binary problem and we have a couple of ways to, to handle that. The first way is the most logical one should be what is called a hard solution. By hard, I don't mean difficult. By hard, I mean that we're going to draw a kind of sharp line between the two possibilities. So once we have classified our set of features, and here we have just a couple of them, x1 and x2, the world is going to be divided into categories. Okay, This is like kind of the borders between nations. So you're either in France or in Spain, but you cannot be somewhere in the middle. Okay, The other possibility is what they call the soft solution. In that case, we're not going to talk about true or false or yes or no. Basically, we're interested in probabilities. So the main metric is what's the conditional probability of being at, at risk of heart disease given some set of features, some set of symptoms. Okay. So as you can see here, we have a kind of heat map of probabilities. So here I'm pretty sure that I'm going to suffer heart disease and here I'm going pretty sure that I'm not. Okay, of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So this is a sort of problem which is called binary classifications because we only have two outcomes, yes or no, zero or one, true or false, and so on and so forth. But of course, we can have multiple classes and, and we have more sophisticated methods if we want to deal with categorical variables which can have more than two possibilities. Okay, I'm going to give you five steps to solve any classification problem. So here they are and, and let's cover them step by step. The first step, of course, is collecting a data set. This is machine learning, and machine learning implies that you try to gain knowledge from data. But the interesting thing here is that classification is a supervised problem, so we need properly labeled cases. In our example above, we need to classify, or better say, to label all the patients in healthy and people who had suffered some heart disease event in the past. Okay. One interesting thing is that we are not going to use all the data to find the model. We're going to split that data set in a couple of, at least a couple of uh, divisions. One is the training set that is typically larger than the testing set. And there is a good reason for doing that. And I'm going to talk about later. The next step is pre-process and clean the data. And this is kind of boring sometimes. It's not consider so fancy, but this is one of the most important and crucial parts in, in your data set for a couple of reasons. You need to clean the data set because sometimes there are some outliers that shouldn't be there or some typos in the data set. And the second thing is that sometimes you need the input from an expert in the field. In this case, we would need some, some input from um, a physician telling us that smoking is important, but other things like, I don't know, being Spanish or being French is not that important. Okay. And of course, there is a whole world in how to process and clean the data, and I'm, I have a couple of videos covering that. Step number three, this is the most exciting step because now we are going to choose the model and we have read a lot of things about tons of models in machine learning. But this is not that important actually because in the end we're going to use three or four types of models and, and we can cover all that. And let's use an example here. Imagine that we have this very small world in which we have a couple of features, x1 and x2, and just two outcomes. So either you're a blue circle or a black square. Okay, You could understand this at high risk and healthy patient. So basically choosing a model means that we want to find a function that maps the features with a given set of parameters, also called weights. And this function is a kind of black box and it's going to give us the, out the output y. 
So let's do an example. We're going to use a hard approach and we're going to measure a linear relationship between the features. So this is a function, this is a plane formed with, with x1 and x2. And we have three parameters, three weights, w0, w1, and w2. And this solution is hard because this function sine is a sharp function. So if, if the argument here is positive, then this is one. If the argument here is negative, this is minus one. So we could understand one as blue and minus one as black. Okay, so let's try a couple of a couple of possibilities. So what if w0 is minus one, w1 is three, and w2 is minus one? Then we have this straight line. This is a sine function, so everything above this line is blue, and everything below this line should be black. Okay, this line is not doing very well, and actually this is not the best choice of other parameters. Let's try other set of parameters. In this case, we have w0 equals one, w1 equals one, and w2 equals minus one, and this looks much better, okay? So this is, the choice of the model should be the sign, and what we have done here is the fourth step, which is basically fitting the model, okay? Here you have a list of different models in classification that we are going to cover in, in different videos. So as I would say, in the next step is fitting the parameters, and we have different choices. So if we go back here, why why the, the thick line is better than the thin line? Because the, the thin line missed this point, okay? So we need a kind of criterion to see if a model is good or bad, okay? And this is called generically the loss function. Again, this is a very advanced topic that I'm going to cover later on, but now we need to know that the trained model sometimes is called the classifier, okay? Sounds like a movie from the 80s. And there are typically two families of, of loss functions. One has to do with minimizing the error, in this case should be no one is left behind, let's say. And the other type of loss function is called the likelihood or maximizing the likelihood. Okay, this is more prone to probabilities and this is typically more typical of regression. Okay, but, but basically we, everything falls more or less in these two families. Okay, we are at the, at the end of this trip. So ne next step, step number five, estimate the generalization capabilities. So a model is not good if it's able to discriminate well. So the thick line, in, in principle, looks very nice because it, it did perfectly with this data set. But what if now we add a new data point? So this is what we call generalization. So here you have three possibilities. This is the linear function that we have used before. This could be the same sign, but instead of using a straight line of features x1 and x2, we could use, I don't know, a quadratic or cubic function of x1 and x2. And we could also increase the, the degree of the polynomial and we end up with something like this. This looks wonderful because so, somehow it looks like that we have nailed the region that separates the blues and the blacks. What the problem is, is that what if we add new examples? And as you can see here, this performs really badly because we, we were so, I know, so excited to having all these black points covered that we have missed any generalization possibility. This has done very well, uh, but actually we have lost this point. And, and this is, in this case, this is the best choice because we have the best of both worlds. So this line looks like it's capturing better the separation between the blue and the blacks and we are able to, to classify future points in, in a proper way. Okay, so in, in next videos, I'm also going to cover how to measure this, not visually, but quantitatively and how to validate different algorithms. And that's all for today. Remember, five steps collect the data, clean the data, choose the model, fit the parameters, and check if this model is able to generalize properly.